Hello, my name's Becky Tregear, and this is my Super Sennelier Swatch Chart. Painstakingly and lovingly ruled out and filled in with all of the names and the pigment numbers, and now I'm going to swatch the whole lot. If you've watched part two of my watercolour collection video, you will see the huge box in which the Sennelier watercolour paints come in. They are a set of 98 tubes, that's all of the range that they have, and I will just show you a little bit of footage now, just to remind you. I've squeezed all my tubes out into half pans and I put them into two tins like this. In one tin I have all of the warm colours and in the blue tin <laughs> I put all of the cool colours. So I have rearranged these to the way that I like and I'm going off this layout on my chart here except I do have a few changes. One of the changes is this warm grey I'm going to move into a slightly different place and that's because when you put the two together it just looks a little bit funny. So what I'm actually going to do, sorry about the banging, is do this one upside down. So that one like that. That's how my, oh let's get it all on. That's how I'm going to do the chart and I'm just going to move that warm grey from there into in between these two. So just a heads up as to how I'm doing it. Let's get into it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to swatch these again. It's been ages. And here we go. As you can see, I've ruled a couple of black lines for the white ones just so we can see them a little bit and how opaque or transparent they are. The titanium white is the most opaque of the two whites. You'll see here the Chinese is really, really transparent and is probably not one I use very often. I tend to go for the titanium white when I do that. Coming into the nickel yellow, PY53, this is nickel titanate yellow, very, very pale and opaque. I'm going to link down in the description Sennelier's color chart, which has all of the information, including opacity and series number and so on. Here we come into Naples Yellow, which is a mix of three pigments, and I tend to prefer that one over the Nickel Yellow. Naples Yellow Deep is made up just of one pigment and is quite a deeper colour than the Naples Yellow. They're both quite good, very earthy tones and quite opaque. Light Yellow Ochre, this one's getting into the yellower section of them. And as you can see, it is quite different to yellow ochre, which is the original ochre with the single pigment. So as you can see already, the Sennelier color range is made up of colors which have either a single pigment or quite often they will have three pigments. So it's completely up to you as to what you like. Obviously, a lot of people want to have the ones that have single pigments, so hopefully this chart will be helpful in finding the ones that are only one pigment. Gold Ochre is a three pigment mix, and next to it is Raw Sienna, which is a one pigment mix. And that PBR7 is a natural iron oxide and is used commonly in quite a lot of the Sennelier earth colours, as we will see a bit further down. Now, sorry I didn't quite move my chart along enough here, but this is the last one on the line. This is quinacridone gold, made up of three pigments, PR101, PY50, and PR206. It's not my favourite, it's a bit duller than some other brands. And French ochre is a mix of four pigments, so that's getting quite a lot of them, and probably maybe not one you want to mix too much with other colours, because the more pigments you have, the muddier they get. Yellow Lake is a stunner. This is Nickel Azo Yellow, if I am correct, and it's so beautifully transparent. I really love this colour. 
Sennelier have amazing yellows and reds especially. Their range is rather prolific in fact and there are probably more yellows than anyone could ever know what to do with. Lemon yellow, a pretty standard lemon, not too much to say about that one. Cadmium lemon yellow, now this is a cadmium colour, it's genuine. It's not a synthetic replacement as other companies are doing because synthetic ones are a bit safer, so do be careful with that. Oriolan, which I can never pronounce, is the genuine one. This can fade or turn a bit brown in the sunlight, so do be careful with that one as well. Cadmium Yellow Light is PY35 again, which is that Cadmium Yellow. Yellow Sophie is one of my favourite yellows, I really love this one. It's lovely and transparent and bright and I do tend to reach for that one the most, I think, out of all of the yellows. The primary yellow is very similar to it, that's also quite nice. So you couldn't really go wrong with either of those two, I don't think. Sennelier Yellow Light. This one seems to me a little bit more opaque and I do tend to just use them interchangeably though because they are all quite similar. Indian yellow is a mix of a couple of colours. I've seen better Indian yellows out there, but this one's quite nice. It's a nice warm yellow. And Sennelier Yellow Deep is a bit warmer again. It's hard to tell on here, but it does dry quite a lot more orange when I'm looking at the chart right now. It's definitely darker than that. Another cadmium yellow, this is the deep version. It's all the same pigment, but they obviously can make slightly different colours out of them. I always get fascinated by that, that one pigment can create so many different variations. Cadmium yellow orange. This is cadmium yellow mixed in with a bit of an orange pigment, and this is also quite a nice one. They are looking a little more yellow on here than they are on my page. They are quite a bit more orange in person. Red orange I think is probably their truest orange that I've got in my set. And Chinese orange is quite a lot darker. It's got a slightly brown undertone as you can see by the PBR 23. But it's lovely and transparent and I'd consider it more of an earthy orange and it's really pretty. Sennelier orange is one of those colours where it's a bit too red to be orange and too orange to be red. It's kind of uh, not quite either one or the other, so I'm not a big fan of it, but it can be quite useful, I guess. I tend to prefer the Chinese orange or the red orange. Scarlet lacquer, on the other hand, is a stunning colour. I really love this one. This is one of my favourite reds that they have. It's so beautifully transparent and vibrant. I love it so much. Rose Dore Meadow Lake is also really good. And you'll see in a moment that French Vermilion is also very similar. All three colours are really beautiful. I find with the Sennelier paints that they sometimes don't go down quite as vibrantly as other brands do, but they are incredible when you start to layer them and glaze them. They can be glazed forever and they just get brighter and brighter and more and more luminous. And they don't get as muddy as some other paint brands become once you layer them or mix them too much. These ones just have this really lovely quality that is very hard to explain unless you've used them. Cadmium Red Light is a genuine cadmium red and is also quite nice. It's a bit more opaque, I think. Now the bright red, it's very strange. This one does not have any pigment information not on the Sennelier's website or anywhere that I can find, so I honestly do not know what colour this is. Some thought it might be Pyrrol Red, but I think it's a bit too blue for that, so your guess is as good as mine. Now Sennelier Red is actually Pyrrol Red, and there is quite a difference between that one and the Bright Red, so I'm pretty sure the other one is not Pyrrol, or it's a mix of pigments. But I always like a Pyrrol Red and so Sennelier Red is one that I tend to use quite a lot. Alizarin Crimson Lake. Now, interestingly, this is the genuine Alizarin Crimson, as you see by the pigment number PR83. It's absolutely beautiful, but it is fugitive, and so you do need to be careful when using it, as it will fade in the sun over time. Alizarin Crimson, ironically, is 
the permanent alizarin crimson of other brands and is a mix of three pigments and you can see here that it is so totally different to the alizarin crimson lake some companies manage to get them almost identical but unfortunately sennelier's is quite a lot darker crimson lake though is beautiful and i really love this one that one i would probably tend to pick over alizarin crimson carmine's also really nice this is made up of pigment PV19, and next to it is Rose Madder Lake, which is also PV19, and that is Quinacridone Rose. The Carmine is a darker version, but I would consider Rose Madder Lake to look like a Quinacridone Rose, and it's a really, really pretty pink red. I love it so much. Such a gorgeous colour. And next to it is Quinacridone Red, which is a little bit redder or warmer than that Rose Madder Lake. But they're both good and they're both nice and light fast so they're great alternatives for reds cadmium red purple again with the cadmium red pigment this one is a bit darker and seems to be more granulating and also is a bit more difficult to re-wet in that it takes a few layers for it to really build up Perylene brown it drives me crazy that there's not an e on the end of Perylene here that's how they spell it though and a mix of a few pigments. I think of the two between this one and cadmium red purple, I would prefer the perylene brown and I do prefer it. Now their Venetian red is a really really opaque one. It's a really solid colour. It's made with PR101 which is a synthetic red iron oxide and it can be made into so many different shades. It's a very versatile pigment that one. Venetian red's great if you don't mind opaque colors but if you don't want to have an opaque color then don't go with the venetian red instead perhaps go with the permanent alizarin crimson deep which is a very very similar shade but as you can see is far more transparent so if you prefer that then this would be your choice over the venetian red burnt sienna going back to that natural iron oxide this pigment also comes in a variety of shades and you can see that it's nice and transparent. The burnt sienna is made from it, as is the burnt umber that I'm painting out now. And you can see that that's also quite transparent. It's not super strong, but it is a nice color to build up. And, you know, they're fairly generic colors on a palette. The raw umber is also made up of PBR7. So you can see there's a huge color variation with that natural iron oxide. Totally light fast. You can't go wrong with it. It'll probably never fade. <laughs> so always those natural pigments tend to be the best in this case and I like that they are single pigments. Caput Mortuum is the same pigment that was used with the Venetian red but you can see that this one is a lot more purple red and is very granulating well at least granulating for Sennelier's standards which is not quite as much as other companies get in the way of granulation. Van Dyke Brown, again PR101, but also has a bit of black mixed in and so is also very opaque. If you prefer a transparent version, then look no further than Transparent Brown, which as you can see is made up of exactly the same pigments as the Van Dyke Brown, just it looks completely different, doesn't it? I love a Transparent Brown. I use them all the time. Warm Sepia, this is really nice too. It's a nice warm dark brown and is a commonly used color on my palette. I find I use it all the time, in fact, really. Raw sepia is a bit too black for my liking, but it's a very blacky brown, as you can see here, and a bit cooler. So I guess this would be quite good if you were painting something that was old-fashioned style. <laughs> And into the true blacks here, although this one's made up of two pigments, lamp black, we've got PBK9 and it's got a little bit of yellow in it, PY43, that's interesting. That's unusual for a lamp black to be more than one pigment, but theirs is, so here we go. It seems to be more transparent than I usually expect from a lamp black. Ivory black is also a nice one here. This is a single pigment and is quite dark, so I really like that. Sorry it went out of focus there, it's because my hand's right in the middle of the screen. Oopsie! <laughs> neutral tint is made up of three pigments and does try to get that perfectly neutral tone I suppose. It's quite a bit warmer though, 
I find than the Payne's Grey which I'm going here. This is also made up of three pigments and Sennelier's Payne's Grey is my absolute favourite Payne's Grey in all of the brands that I've ever tried. There's just something about it that I just reach for it again and again. It dilutes out so well and you can get a huge range of values from it. Going into light grey, very much a convenience colour. If you had either the Payne's Grey or the Ivory Black and one of the whites, you could probably mix this up. But it's not bad, you know, it's quite nice. You can see here, this is the warm grey that I moved into this section from my warm palette. It's a lot browner and seems more brown than grey to me. But going into the Sennelier grey, this one's so much greener. So can you can see how different all of those greys are from each other? The Sennelier Grey does have some green pigment in there. Brown Pink. I genuinely don't know why it's called Brown Pink. <laughs> There's no pink in there, but I really love this paint and I use it a lot. The Brown Green is also really nice and I've quite often used the two interchangeably. They're very similar to each other. The Brown Green seems to be a little bit more vibrant. The Green Earth does not re-wet well, it's a very low tinting one, but it is a very very soft green and I do kind of like it even though it's not very highly tinted. Olive Green is much stronger and it looks a bit bluer on the screen here but it's actually quite a yellowy green and is quite pleasant to use. Bright Yellow Green is another one I use a lot. It's really great for lightening up other greens and it's very very yellow based so it's excellent for highlights as well. So that's one of my favorites or well most used. I'm not sure what I was doing there but <laughs> the Thalo Green Light is also another one that I quite often use especially mixed with the bright yellow green. They work well together and they're both lovely and bright. The Cadmium Green Light is one I use off and on. It's quite opaque but it's also quite pleasant. It's actually a mix of Thalo Green and emerald green here is thalo green as well, which I think is amazing because I've never seen thalo green look like this. I thought emerald green was its own pigment, but nope, they use thalo green and that's usually the yellow shade, so go figure. Chromium oxide green, this is a very solid uniform green and has a bit of granulation going on. Sap Green by Sennelier is not one of my favourites. I think it's because they use PB29 which is ultramarine and it comes across as a little bit dull. I much prefer the Hooker's Green here which feels a lot more luminous and I tend to use this a lot for doing bright foliage. It's a nice colour I really like. It's probably my favourite of the Sennelier greens. Although Greenish Umber is also another one I really like. It's very very dark. It's meant to be like a perylene green, although it's made up with a number of pigments and it's great for shadows, it's excellent. Forest green is another favourite of mine. Really beautiful dark phthalo green almost, but I use this one too. So hookers, greenish umber and forest greens are all ones that I tend to use on my palette a lot. Sennelier green is PG36, which is the what I would consider the standard version of Thalo Green Yellow Shade. It's a good colour for mixing, especially because it only has one pigment. Viridian Green is a mix of Viridian and Thalo Green Blue Shade. In this case, I think a combination of two pigments is a good thing because it makes it so much easier to re-wet. Viridian on its own is an absolute nightmare. It dries like a brick and it's hopeless. <laughs> so this one's a good one to get. Thalo Green Deep. This is a mix of thalo green blue shaded with a bit of thalo blue in there as is the thalo turquoise which I'm guessing just has a bit more blue. On the tubes some of them have thalo and others have thalo cyanine so I've tried to write out the names as they come on the tubes so that it's easier for you to find them. Cobalt green, love this colour, I use this one all of the time, it's so pretty, it's a lovely turquoise but going into that greener area. And turquoise green, here is another PG50. If you saw my previous video looking into the art spectrums, their Australian turquoise also uses the same pigment and I love it, it's gorgeous. Cenarius blue is thalo blue mixed in with a bit of white and I really like this colour. It's still quite transparent even though it has that white and that's because Chinese white, as we saw before, is also really transparent. So yeah, good colour. 
Cerulean Blue takes a bit more to get going. It's very granulating and I personally cannot tell the difference between Cerulean Blue and Cerulean Blue Red Shade. They are made up of the same pigment, but maybe the Cerulean Blue has a bit more granulation now I'm looking at my chart when they've been dried. Royal Blue, a convenience mix, has white in it, titanium white in this case, so it is quite opaque. And now we are going into Thalo Cyanine Blue, which is generally the yellow shade when it's PB15 colon 3. We'll see the red shade a bit later when it's PB15 colon 6. Great blue, lovely and transparent, very staining. I adore this cobalt blue, it's beautiful. I don't normally go for cobalt blues, but Sennelier's one is fantastic, as is their cobalt blue deep. Now these are both genuine cobalt pigments and they're both really nice, so you do have to be a little careful. They are toxic, being that they are heavy metals, so always wash your hands after using them and please, for the love of God, do not drink the paint water. Okay, going on to Ultramarines, we've got three of them here using the standard Ultramarine PB29. This is Ultramarine Light, next to it is Ultramarine Deep, and the third one is French Ultramarine, which does have a little bit of violet pigment mixed in with that PB29. When I'm looking at my chart, they really look very similar to one another. I think the ultramarine light has the most granulation and perhaps the French ultramarine has the least and is just a slight hint more purple but otherwise they're all really similar to one another. Now here's the Thalo blue red shade, it's called Blue Sennelier. It does look quite similar to the ultramarine until you start layering it and then it does get quite dark. It's a lovely transparent colour too. It's actually more similar to the Prussian blue here, which is another genuine pigment. And this is a very nice, transparent and fairly dark blue. So any of these are going to work well on your palette. Indigo is a mix of pigments. So if you had next to it blue indenthrine, a phthalo blue and a black, you can make your own indigo. But it's nice to have them ready made because then you don't have to worry about mixing it exactly right. If you prefer a dark blue that only has one pigment, then choose the blue endanthrene, which is endanthrone blue. It's a really nice one, it gets nice and dark. Speaking of dark, here's dioxazine purple, which looks almost black when it's painted out neat. So I've added in some water here to dilute it. Fabulous purple, you can't go wrong with this one. But it does get really dark, so sometimes an alternative is blue violet, which is a much lighter pigment. This is ultramarine violet. Because it isn't as dark as dioxazine purple, it's actually quite a handy colour to have, especially when you just don't want a really, really dominating purple. It's nice and delicate, and I like it a lot. Red violet is also quite pretty. As you can see, it's much redder than that blue violet, hence the names, and they are also nice to use. Now it's interesting here that Sennelier do not use cobalt violet and as we've seen from videos that I've done with Core and a few others, cobalt violet is such a nightmare to re-wet. So instead Sennelier have made two different hues of it and have used a mix of pigments. I like them both, I think they're really pretty. Permanent magenta is a fairly standard one, nice and transparent, but I much prefer Helios purple. I think this is an absolutely stunning colour and I use this one all of the time. PR122 is quinacridone magenta, one of my all-time favourite pigments, so beautiful. And lucky last is Opera Rose. It's got that fluoro element to it, so it will fade over time. It's pretty enough, but I think I prefer Daniel Smith's version, which I just swatched out recently too. And here they all are, freshly swatched out. It's always hard to know in which order to put them, but they're done now, so <laughs> I might have wanted to put these purpley ones up here, but yeah, never doesn't really matter. At least we can see all of the colours. There are a few granulating ones in here, especially the Kaput Mortuum and these Cerulean Blues. And if I lift it up, you might see some in the Ultramarine Light, the red violet and the cobalt violet, uh, Snellier greens showing a bit, and maybe that cadmium red purple, 
and a little bit in the sienna and the gold ochre. But for the most part, I've found that Sennelier watercolours are gently granulating at the most, and the majority of the colours are pretty flat. So if you want paints that don't really granulate, these are absolutely ideal. They're really good for doing a really smooth wash and things like that. I'm also looking at that light grey. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> the light grey is also quite granulating. If you want paints that are really granulating, then you're probably better off going with someone like Daniel Smith, who have a lot more in the granulating range. But I love the Sennelier's range. I really wish they'd add two more colours just to make it an even hundred. I'm going to hang this up on my wall, I think, <laughs> because it's so pretty. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Tune in next time. I'm actually going to do a proper painting, <laughs> not just a swatched up, but an actual painting with the Sennelier watercolors. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And then you will be able to see my next video when it comes out in a few more days. So I will see you all then. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I'll swatch you later. Bye.